I've always had kind of an internal mission statement to build every plane I ever liked. I started in, with rubber band comet kits back, back in the late 40s and early 50s. There's not many builders left, and you know, that's one of the things that you hear we, mentioned all the time. So We, we are dinosaurs, and, <laughs> and this segment of the hobby is definitely uh, a dinosaur. You make a couple of revolutions of the field, and I mean, most people are bored to tears because it doesn't do much, except hopefully stay alive in the air. Right. Did you ever get into full-scale aviation yourself? Sure, sure. My father had a little airstrip here in town, and both my mother and father had a pilot's license, so I got to ride in the back seat a lot of times in Aronka Champs and Fairchild F-24s. And You know, I like to watch planes more than I liked to be in them. Yeah. But back in the 80s, I built a small experimental and got a license and flew around for a while, but I think after the fifth force landing in three years, I decided I really didn't have a death wish <laughs> and, uh, and got out of that and into the RC. Now pretty much all of your airplanes are, are balsa and ply, are they yes. not? Yeah, the sit, you can see here. I can see the construction the, inside, sure, yeah. Sure, it's nothing exotic at all. The most exotic thing about it might be the, the spar structure, mm -hmm. which is essentially a piece of balsa sandwiched between two pieces of basswood. Hmm. And on top of that, a carbon fiber strip on the bottom and the top to give it uh, great strength. Sure. Tell me a little <laughs> bit about what you, where you get that finish from, because that's not an easy thing to replicate. Well, it, it isn't very good. It's actually using a product that sign makers use. It's called Oraful. I call it awful, but it's O-R-A-F-O-L. It doesn't do compound curves real well, but that's where mixing and matching aluminum tape with this stuff works pretty good. You make your own molds for the cowlings and sure. the nose and everything else? Sure, yeah. Now how'd yeah. you learn how to do that? I mean, is that... Trial and error, mostly error. <laughs> mostly error. Yeah. I do see one other airplane over here that's, I guess for lack of a better term, normal size. Do you have, do you have some smaller stuff that you fly also? There are times when I go out and fly electrics and have fun, but to me the thrill is in building these larger airplanes. When you say, ah, that's going to be my winter project, you know, where, yeah, where does that yeah. begin? Like, what do you start with? Well, I'm, I'm lazy. I, I don't draw up the plans if I don't have to. I'd probably continue building even if I didn't fly, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't build huge airplanes. I can go right back to carving models for all I care. When you take a plane out to the field and somebody says, not is it a beautiful plane, but wow, is that big. And if I can fly it for people who later on tell me that really looked real in the air, that's just music to my ears. I'm yeah. swooning uh, <laughs> when, I, when I hear that kind of stuff.